Our mantra this week is to make certain you'll experience our commitment to being relevant, and this is our promise, to evolving and to make certain you feel that there really is a measurable ROI on your investment. And as Jordan said, I arrived in May, and I felt at that moment we needed to take a snapshot. We needed to sort of stop, take a moment in time, and understand more about your perceptions of what we do well and how we could improve. So we invested in research about what you appreciate and what should be left in history. So what did we learn? Well, first, we know that most all of you love Miami and this hotel setting. God, who wouldn't? Uh, so I'm happy to announce that we're back in 2014, and we're working on 2015 uh, and beyond. Uh, we do have momentum, and uh, you know we're up double digit versus last year, which is terrific. Uh, there's over a thousand buyers here this week, and as somebody who used to sell and as a buyer, I got to tell you, the two have to go together. So I'm loving these trends. We also learned that these January dates work for the majority of you, and after 2014, we promise. Swear to God, there won't be any scheduling conflicts of real screen. Uh, we apologize for that. Uh, but to offset the issue, we've installed, uh, with real screen's cooperation, a real-time video conferencing uh, facility. It's in the Navigator Lounge so that you'll be able to connect and have virtual meetings with your colleagues. By the way, what a bummer to have to be up there where you could be here, right? Uh, but, uh, so in real time, you can actually have those meetings. You also told us you wanted a functioning sort of GPS of what's going on here at the meeting as you're, as you're experiencing it. And that app that has been designed by no less than Core Apps, who is the premier designer of these sort of apps, um, is available to you. I, I Please use it. it is, it's so easy. It's so functional. It's just fantastic. So download it and do it now. That's your assignment. So what's here this week? Uh, and let's talk about how it delivers on another promise, which is to attract really a blue chip roster of leaders and influencers and speakers. And obviously with digital so critical, critical to every segment of our business, because it touches every segment of our business, 41% of the 200 panelists, let me say that again, 41% of the 200 panelists and speakers this year are successful leaders in the world of digital content, no less than Mark Cuban, by the way. Over 30 speakers come from the world of brands and advertisers, and over 100 are from the world of broadcast, cable, international, finance, and distribution. And for those of you, by the way, who are out there who helped us develop this program, thank you so much. I gotta tell you, it is invaluable to have your expertise help shape what we're doing over these next few days. You also listened when you told us you want more networking events each night, and we listen, and we're all about bringing together everyone for events that are a mashup of linear and digital diversity from all corners of our domestic and international businesses. And like nappies of the past, we're going to party. On Tuesday night, we're throwing a 50th birthday badge for ourselves, and you're all invited, but you've got one assignment. Here's the assignment. You've got to pretend you're turning 52. That's it. I don't care if you're 28. I really don't give a shit. You're, gonna, you're, turning, you're turning 50 that night. Because we got Fitz and the Tantrums, a killer band. If you haven't heard them, they're amazing. Yeah. It's free. It's free. It's at our expense. It starts at 10 o'clock Tuesday night at the Live Club um, in, in the Fountain Blue. One caveat, please understand, if you can't get in, it isn't our fault. It's because you didn't get there early enough. There's sort of no VIP status in this. It's democratic. Please be there. And don't get mad if some intern is saying, I'm sorry, sir, I don't know who you are, but you can't get in. It's only because of fire laws. Please understand that. Let's talk about what's ahead for NAPI, which is what we're working on and working hard on. I'm really proud of the pace uh, uh, of what the staff has been doing. And, and, uh, and again, by the way, the executive committee and the board. Uh, we have to rethink our fil formula and rebuild on the momentum that began when Rick Feldman and the board made the decision to move to Miami, which God bless them, that was such a shrewd move. So let me tell you about what's in the works. But I want to start by saying, I want to really assert this, and I want you to hear this, because we are a domestic and an international market, and everything we're developing serves both of the communi those communities and every sort of segment within those communities. That's what we're about, that's never gonna change. We're committed to bringing more local television stations back to Napa. And over time, um, 
We're going to help with you develop smart new initiatives that are relevant to this important part of our legacy, our legacy and our business. Now, if you're hearing a kind of digital theme and, and uh, directional sort of narrative here, it's intentional. Because everyone's future has to embrace digital, and NAPI is, NAPI is committed to becoming the conference and market record for the linear and emerging digital content in the world. So how are we going to deliver on that objective? Pretty ambitious. Well, first, we're not going to overpromise and then underdeliver. So we had to commit by reaching out for substance, for talent, for experience, and I'm proud to say our first meaningful move is to announce that Ross Levinson, the newly named CEO of Guggenheim Digital Media, has agreed to chair a new digital advisory brain trust for NAPI that will provide guidance and mentoring on how we deliver on our digital market objectives. They're not going to be immediate. It's going to take a bit of time, a lot of thought, a lot of process, a lot of interaction and feedback from you, but that is the direction we're heading. We also believe that partnerships with other organizations are part of the media landscape because it's in our interests to add value to your experience by having those partnerships. And I'm delighted that the first is with CES, the Consumer, Consumer Electronics Show, which is going to deliver on our belief that we've got to connect the world of digital advancements to NAPI's events. And one tangible way we're doing, doing that this over the next three days is uh, by having TV Plus a leading provider of second screen applications to networks, demonstrate their technology by allowing you to interact in real time with some of the conferences. We're also in conversations with the Interactive Advisory Board, or the IAB in New York, to host an event at this year's New Fronts in New York, which are the, uh, the digital versions of the Upfronts. We need to do a better job of how we interact with you, and we're completely overhauling and investing in a redesigned website to improve your user experience. It'll roll out in the first quarter of this year. And finally, look for a new marketing campaign that will engage more new participants about our other events, like PitchCon, a proud, fantastic event that I don't think enough people know about. And to Budapest, uh, you know, we run a market in Budapest that is uh, growing and it's vital and it serves that Eastern European community as well as that entire region. So look for much more to come and, announce, and more announcements over the next few weeks. Gotta tell you, Never expected to be standing up here. And, uh, you know, when I got the call, it was, uh, I, don't, I don't know, but, uh, you know, because I, I, I had always been a part of NAPI. It was always one of my favorite places. Uh, and uh, I'm so pleased that I made the decision to, uh, to join NAPI. And uh, I'm really fortunate to be part of all of this. And again, I want to thank Jordan. I want to thank the executive committee and all of the board members that I'm getting to know and, and rely on their support. And, I really say this with sincerity. I want to thank you for bringing your teams here this week, being here, participating, providing feedback so that we can be more responsive, and ultimately recognizing, and I really mean this, that we're all partners in this. Uh, it's an exciting time. In fact, one could argue that it's as exciting a time in television today and content today as it has been in 50 or 60 years. So happy birthday to us. It's a, it's a really cool time, and I, I must tell you, I promise, we're committed to thriving beyond disruption. Thanks. Now, the fun part. You've done your homework. You listen, and I appreciate it. So it is with great pleasure that I introduce uh, an internet entrepreneur turned titan of media and sports, a killer shark and a true maverick, our keynote speaker Mark Cuban along with our unbelievably well-informed interviewer, CNN's Poppy Harlow. Mark and Poppy, let's get to work. So if you've got a good question, 
keep it in mind and we'll bring a mic around. Um, but when I was getting ready for this, I've interviewed Mark a few times and what I always appreciate is that he says exactly what he thinks and we don't get you that, just be fine. that yeah. often. We did, <laughs> we did first interview I did with Mark Cuban, right? It's about business, this and that, and at the end I throw in a question about, hey, would you be interested in LeBron James? So he answers me, but apparently you can't do that. Nope. So uh, the next day on ESPN, I see $100,000 fine, and I think this guy is never going to sit down with me again for an interview. That's close. <laughs> but he did. Um, so a few, few fun facts. They say uh, Mark has mellowed since having kids. I'm not sure if that's true or not. We'll see. Uh, he bought into Yahoo after Carissa Meyer took over, which I found pretty interesting. So he's bullish on that. He uh, has recently said politics scares him because you can't be honest. So don't even think of asking if him if he'll ever run, although he does have a lot of political opinions. Um, he said on CNN last week something interesting, and he said that he doesn't think America's in bad shape at all. He's pretty bullish on our economy and our future, which I like to hear, and he's in the Warren Buffett camp when uh, the question comes up of should the rich pay more in taxes. So those are some interesting things that stood out to me. But I think the most interesting thing is what he just told me right now backstage, and he said uh, television has a huge advantage over the internet, and he said the internet is designed for everything but video. This coming from the internet guy. So, what? You know, first of all, you know, we started AudioNet that turned into broadcast.com in 1995. So we, I started streaming in 1995. Nothing that started in 1995 is still new. You know, it's, gone, it's off to college now. <laughs> yeah, so. You know, having been involved in streaming and, and technology for so long, I, I try to take an, an objective look. And if you look at what YouTube or any streaming um, streamer does, they take a content source, they encode it, they put it out via digital, and it goes to an end device. How's that any different than television? You know, so you know what you see on television is basically streaming. The difference is. When you put it out over the internet, the internet's designed for everything but video. Television is designed for video. And I think so, you know, over the past 17 years, we've gotten so internet centric that we forget that the technology is moving just as quickly, if not faster, on the internet side. And then people look at it and say, well, look at the, the Time Warners, the DirecTV, the Dishes, et cetera, the, the um, telcos, Verizon, and AT&T. You know, they're stupid, right? They're not going to do it right. They always get it wrong. Well, again, the, the kids that were 22 years old when, when we started AudioNet are now 40 years old in, in, in management positions. There's no more stupidity about the internet where you think, you know, if just because you're online, all the traditional media companies are at a disadvantage. They're not. And what I'll, what I'll tell you is that television has a huge advantage in the social media world. Why? Why? Because, I'm glad you asked. Um, <laughs> you know what zero latency is? Zero latency is when everybody experiences the same thing at the same time, right? Does everybody here have perfect wireless at home? No. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Um, everybody's TV work when you turn it on? Yes. Yeah. See, the thing about zero latency on television, everybody sees the same thing pretty much at the same time. Maybe not instantaneously at the same time, but you all share at the same time. And now that we're sitting with our devices on our couches with, you know, it used to be our hand was on our pants and one hand was on a beer, but now we've got one or two hands on the device. And we're tweeting and we're posting to whatever our social media is. And we're using television as the instigator for all that. So now television, because of zero latency, has become the, the starting point for conversations. The reality is, when you watch on television, when you watch a Mavs game, when you watch Shark Tank, when you watch Access TV and we're broadcasting a live concert, it's a unique experience that you can't get online. So if Access TV, if we're broadcasting Aerosmith, um, like we did a few weeks ago, we had the people with the band tweeting, we had people at the concert, we're handing them postcards and stuff saying tweet to the people watching, we had the people watching tweet, and that created a unique experience. Yeah. Now think about Gago Sound. A billion people watch that online. Everybody here watch Gangnam Style? Yeah. Did you talk to anybody while you did it? Do you know any two people that engaged with each other while they were watching? It's such a different experience. Then you take the next part. You know, there might be 300 channels and nothing on, but like we were talking earlier, you can put something on the smallest TV network in the middle of the night, and you're going to get more views than any video that you put online without a ton of promotion. 
And so television has become the